They're fast. They come in crazy colors. They are some seriously vicious tomatoes. These are some of the baddest Fords ever produced from souped up hot rods to muscle trucks to compact sleepers that'll make you say, ooh, that's a fast car. This one's for all my blue oval babies out there. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on SVT. Now everyone can agree that the new C8 Corvette is one of the coolest cars to come out in, I don't know, ever, at least the last 20 years. And lucky for you, you can enter for a chance to win a new 2020 Corvette Stingray Z51 with taxes and shipping included, plus $20,000 cash. No, I'm not pulling your leg, muchacha. This thing is real. And it's all thanks to our friends at Omaze. You can donate for your chance to win at omaze.com slash donut. And when you do, you'll also be supporting the Ronald Reagan Medical Center at UCLA. About six months ago, I had a heart attack and UCLA Ronald Reagan Medical Center were the guys who saved my life. So do yourself a favor. Do me a favor, do anyone with a heart condition a favor and head over to amaze.com slash donut and enter for your chance to win a brand new 495 hertz per sub three second zero to 60 Corvette plus 20,000 bones to spend on whatever you want. Good luck. Chapter one, Savorigins? Now to understand the story of SVT, we gotta talk about their predecessor, their daddy, SVO. Back in the 60s and 70s, Ford was super focused on motorsport. You win on Sunday, you sell on Monday. But when that pesky little gas crisis hit, people didn't care about fast cars anymore and they needed fuel efficient cars. Ford corporate didn't want to be seen as irresponsible, so they pulled the company out of racing altogether. Fast forward to 1980. And things were a little different. My uncle Harrison Ford was striking back at the empire. Lita Ford was striking up the pop charts. And Henry Ford II, aka Hank the Deuce, was leaving Ford after a long, long career. But before he left the throne, he had one wish. Let's go back to the track and beat everyone. And with that, Ford's newest performance branch was born. They called it Special Vehicle Operations, or SVO. Bow, 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 bow. Do, 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 Surprisingly, the man chosen to reignite Ford's red-blooded racing American image was a German guy named Michael Krenefus. He was Ford Germany's manager in 1972, where he led development of the Ford Capri, a sports coupe that would eventually win two European Touring Car Championships, earning Michael a reputation within Ford as someone who knew how to win. And if you've watched our episode on Ford vs. Ferrari or listened to our podcast on Ford vs. Ferrari, you know that Hank the Deuce, he loves to win. Upon arriving in the U.S., Kranenfuss set SVO's sights on the IMSA GTP series. Now the rules state, A car has to be safe for the driver and competitors racing next to it, and use an engine based off of one available to the public. Now SVO could have bought a dominant European race chassis, adapted it for a big old Ford V8 and called it a day, but no. SVO team member Bob Riley would design something different from the normal mid-engined European GTP crowd. For starters, Bob placed the engine in the front. That meant the SVO team had more room in the rear of the car to employ their secret weapon, ground effects. The wing-shaped structure underneath the car created a low pressure zone between it and the track, which sucked it down to the ground. The whole dang car weighed about 1,800 pounds. The resemblance to Ford's Mustang was obvious, but their choice of what would power this beast was not. A turbocharged 1.7 liter Cosworth BDA engine originally developed for their Group B Escort rally prototype. The SVO Mustang GTP made its debut at the 1983 IMSA race at Road America to a lot of hype. I mean, this was Ford's return to road racing, a sport dominated by the European rivals in an untested car, no less. But 
SVL blew everyone away, finishing first overall as rain fell on the checkered flag. Ford was back, baby, for a minute. Unfortunately, the 1.7 and upgraded 2.1 liter engines were hellishly unreliable and Ford only stayed in GTP racing for two seasons before pulling out the next year in 1984. But not everything that came out of the GTP project was a failure. Inspired by the turbo engine in the GTP, SVO took a stock Fox body Mustang and dropped a turbocharged 2.4 liter engine under the hood, complete with an intercooler, which was at the time very, very impressive. Now this engine may have been half of the size of the five liter V8, but the turbo four banger actually made an equal amount of power at 200 buffy little dingy ding ding hearspers, which made the 86 Mustang SVO the fastest Mustang available to the public. <laughs> Chapter two, show enough. Ford corporate had plans to battle European sports cars with a mid-engine beast of their own. The prototype was engineered by Roush and called the GN34. It looked freaking sick, but Ford ditched the project to focus on the Explorer SUV. They did hold on to one very important component of the experiment, the engine. <laughs> Ford had partnered with Yamaha to develop a high revving V6 engine called the Show, which was short for super high output. This little monster had an official red line of 7,300 RPMs, although it's rumored to be as high as 8,500. The engine was naturally aspirated and made 220 hearspers. This made it one of the most powerful American engines at the time. Now the question was, what would it go in? SVO thought they had the answer. Taurus, now there's an American car with the shape and the feel we've never seen before. When the final production version arrived in 1989, it wasn't without its flaws. The car ate through clutches faster than Nolan eats through a family pack of Oreos. It says family size right on the box, Nolan. This isn't good for you, all right? Learn from my mistakes. I'm super stoked that Wheelhouse finally has its own shirt. I love the shirt. I love how it came out, and you will too. You can get it on our store. Donutmedia.com. Despite the clutch issue, the Taurus show sold over 15,000 units in its first year. It could beat a BMW 535i off the line and reach a higher top speed of 143 miles per. Believe it or not, the Taurus show wasn't even the weirdest show car. The Ford truck division got in on the action in 1990 with the Ranger show. Unfortunately, that was just a one-off, but the Ford leadership saw the demand for factory hot rods and set out to deliver. SVO was no more, and in its place was a new division, SVT, and their first project would be sending off the Fox Body Mustang with a bang. The third generation or Fox Body Mustang had been in production since 1978, but it was 19 freaking 92 at this point, baby. Criss Cross was wearing their clothes backwards, and there were three Lethal Weapon movies at this point. It was time for a change. Chapter 3, SVTing it off. SVT started with a stock Mustang GT, but switched out the cylinder heads for better flowing GT40 heads. To improve shifting, a Borg Warner T5 transmission was bolted on the back. They revised the suspension with Coney shocks, bolted on bigger brakes, and threw on some sweet, sweet turbine style wheels. They called it the SVT Cobra. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How are you doing that? The upgraded power in the Cobra meant that it could do 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds, making it one of the quickest cars of 1993. But SVT wasn't started just so Ford could make hot rods. They also strived to keep the race bred legacy of SVO going as well. So along with the Cobra, SVT developed a racetrack ready version called the Cobra R. This straight up track toy was relieved of anything not meant for the track. That meant no radio, no AC, <laughs> and no warranty. SVT only produced 107 units of the Cobra R for a price of $47,000 in today's money. SVT would continue to pump out Cobras and Cobra Rs throughout the 1990s, stuffing the five liter under 
under the hood of the SN95 Mustang, which normally got the 4.6, and tweaking the bodywork to let those in the know straight up know. But the team wasn't just focused on Mustangs. They wanted to make hot rods of all kinds. So SVT got to work on a new sport truck. And instead of going with the Ranger, like back in the SVO days, SVT opted to trick out the full-size F-150. The team grabbed the 351 Windsor V8 from the F-250 and pimped it out with a new intake tubular headers which sound amazing and those gt40 heads that i was talking about for the cobra they installed swift they swiffer state installing swiffer sway bar stiffer sway bars and leaf springs decreasing body roll in the turn so you could track your freaking truck with a bunch of lumber in it finally they added the most important mod of all a sweet ass sticker with my favorite freaking word lightning <laughs> The Cobra and the Lightning were great standard bearers for the SVT badge, showing the industry what the team was all about. But they had yet to build a true oddball. The totally new Ford Contour, a world's car for the 21st century. The Contour was Ford's replacement for the Tempo. Some of you European viewers might be noticing how similar the Contour looks to the Modeo. That's because the Contour is an American Mondeo. But the Contour was noticeably more expensive than the previous Tempo, and customers responded by not buying them. Ford needed a fix, and they tasked SVT with making the Contour more exciting to draw more buyers to this base model. So it's like, hey, check out this cool version of the car. Well, I can't afford the cool version, but now that I know there's a cool version, the not so cool version seems a lot more cool. The Contour SVT went on sale in 1997 for the 1998 model year, and from the jump, people loved it. The retuned suspension made the thing an absolute charmer on the twisty stuff. They installed some more aggressive cams, some uh, super fancy pistons, and a lighter flywheel. The tweaks boosted power to 195 horsepower sent to the front wheels through a five-speed transmission. The Contour proved that SVT wasn't just here to make even faster Mustangs and sport trucks. SVT was a bunch of Ford nerds making Fords for Ford nerds. And we'll see, anything was fair game. And by anything, I mean a new sports truck. Chapter four, the glory years. SVT debutted the second gen Lightning in 1999 based off the 10th gen F-150. The styling was probably controversial to automotive journalists at the time, but I don't think that there's a Ford that's aged better than the Gen 2 Lightning, with a super sleek bumper with integrated fog lights and a love it or hate it step side bed. I love it. The side exit exhaust gives you a little hint that this thing wasn't meant to haul just sheetrock, it was meant to haul booty. Under the hood, SVT took the 5.4 liter Triton V8 and threw a 1.9 liter root style supercharger on top. The Gen 2 Lightning set the pace for SVT's run in the early 2000s and SVT hit the new millennium ground running with one of the baddest, and I mean baddest, Mustangs ever concocted. Even more bad than the ones that I've already been talking about for this whole freaking video. <laughs> The 1999 SVD Cobra dropped in 1999, sporting the new 4.6 liter V8 and perhaps the biggest leap forward for the Mustang, independent rear suspension. But trouble was brewing when owners discovered that their new cars were actually slower to 60 than the previous model. Instead of putting down Ford's claimed 320 hertz per independent test showed that it was more like 285 is not cool so ford stopped selling the 99 cobra and recalled every single one that had been sold and as a result there are no 2000 model year cobras there is however the 2000 cobra r <laughs> the cobra r was a true race car it didn't have a gas tank yeah it had a race certified fuel cell. It was also devoid of any of these 
normie comforts. Instead of using the new 4.6 from the Cobra, SVT grabbed a naturally aspirated version of the 5.4 liter V8, similar to the one in the Lightning, just without the blower. This thing revved to 6,500 RPM, making a perfect horse pork. 385 hertz per 385 pound feet of twerks. Power went to the ground through the first ever six speed transmission in a Mustang and through the groundbreaking independent rear suspension. But the truly crazy thing is the Cobra R could back up its deranged appearance. It was the fastest Mustang ever at that point with a top speed of 170 miles per. Ford only made about 300 of these things and meaning they're too expensive for us to buy and they were all red. Long before the Focus ST and Focus RS were available in the US, SVT got in on the hatchback fun. They took the kind of boring Focus ZX3, dressed it up with a very European looking body kit and fooled around with the four banger engine. The Focus SVT was produced from 2002 to 2004 and was only available with a six speed manual. These things are super tunable. I've even seen ones with superchargers on them. However, SVT was in a bad spot. The Mustang, the bread and butter was flopping. If we want to rebound, we got to do something big, like supercharge a Mustang big. Actually, that's a pretty good idea. Blue sky meeting over, that's what we're gonna do. Let's do it, guys. The latest Cobra, the 2003 Terminator, was an instant classic. SVT installed a Roots supercharger and upgraded the internals to handle the extra stress. One notable upgrade was the use of manly aftermarket connecting rods. And if you, I don't know if you know, but those are not cheap. The next year, they somehow made the Terminator even more bonkers by offering an otherworldly paint called Mystic Chrome. Only a thousand of these aliens were made with their signature green to purple color shift paint. The 2004 Terminator would be the final SN95 slash New Edge Mustang SVT would work on. It's a fulfilling send off and it's good that they cleared up some time on their plate because SVT was about to embark on their most demanding project yet chapter five bigger and buffer things and a truck named after a dinosaur ford was coming up on both their 100 year anniversary and the 40th anniversary of one of their biggest achievements as a company beating ferrari at le mans in 1966 and to celebrate the company wanted to revive the ford gt name john coletti led the project himself with ford alum neil Hanneman acting as chief engineer. The first prototype was tested just 100 days after the project was approved. But guys, this is exactly what they did with the GT40 back in the 60s. So it's kind of par for the course and very, very appropriate if you think about it. Powered by big old Ford V8, the GT had a bespoke aluminum block with four valve heads for drastically improved flow dual fuel injectors in every cylinder, oil squirters for improved lubrication, and crazy high lift camshafts that made the engine scream like a dang Fisher cat. It's not the same as a lightning motor, like some people think. It's not. After the GT, SVT was back to their old tricks, souping up Mustangs with blowers and all manner of suspension tweaks. The new S197 Gen Stang was out and SVT was tinkering with it. But after, quote, Ford Division mainstreamed special vehicle team operations and entered into a new business relationship with Carroll Shelby in 2006. It's legal talk. The car that SVT had been working on was rebadged as a Shelby and released as the GT500 in 2007. <laughs> Lately, SVT has been working on the Raptor, the Baja proven pickup that everyone from Simi Valley bros to your mom can appreciate. The Raptor is arguably responsible for the resurge in off-road focused sport trucks that we've been seeing. I'm talking stuff like the Tacoma TRD, the Chevy ZR2 Bison, and Dodge's Ram Trex. We did a whole dang episode on the Raptor, so if you wanna know more about that, you can go freaking check it out. I'll put the description down below. As trucks finally surpass sedans as the best-selling vehicles in America, the sport truck market will likely be healthy for a while, but it makes me wonder, will we ever see an SVT car? Again?
Make sure you like and subscribe. That's how we know that you like our stuff. If you want to learn more about fast forwards, check out this episode of the show. If you want to watch a four part series on me and Joe and Nolan talking about Ford versus Ferrari and Carol Shelby, check out this episode of our podcast. You might not even know that we have a podcast, but we do. I love you.